<clears throat> Hello, testing words. I wasn't muted this whole time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mav, longtime ESO player, kind of off and on for a while. Played in the alpha, kind of diving back in. Really excited for all of, of the new things. But what I'm going to show you today is the cinematic reaction, the live event that they had today on the June, June, January 27th is the date of today. I also tweeted a bunch of key things about the new card game and the companions and the pets and the pictures and all sorts of stuff. But I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'll be playing ESO full times a week going forward with a friend. So make sure you guys subscribe if you enjoy Elder Scrolls content. Let me know below what your class and everything that you play is. I'd love to know. I'd love to find more friends that play Elder Scrolls. No level restrictions and no subscription required. Whoa. This massive world is yours to explore alone but too loud. or with friends. Choose a favorite location or storyline and jump in. From the capital cities Let's of the go. three alliances to the magical Somerset. It'll Islands. be edited. It'll From be an edited. territory of elsewhere to Morrowind, the home of the Dark Elves. From frozen Skyrim in the north to the endless swamps of Blackmarsh. Adventure. Also, welcome if you're just tuning in. We're watching all the new ESO Options announcements for, for 22. And personalizing Wee. characters in the Elder so Scrolls excited. Online are almost without limit. Oh. With access to a multitude of adventures all across the width and breadth of Tamriel. Oh. And the freedom you got your PS5? to play wherever oh. and however you like. It's time to begin your Elder Scrolls story. Are you ready, I'm ready. to forge your own legend? I'm ready to forge my own legend! Greetings, everyone. <gasps> Welcome to the show. It's mad, I know you're Lord. all excited to see the it's amazing Dad. things we have coming up this year. But before we get started, I'd like to take a minute and just talk about the video you just saw. It was a brief description of some of the basic systems of ESO, but the game itself is so much more than that. And I really mean it. ESO is just as much a virtual world as it is a game. As over 20 million of you know, it's part of your lives. Over the last two years, we know that so many of you found some temporary respite from the world by spending time in Tamriel. We're so Dragons. proud and so humbled to help, even in this small way. Everyone at Zenimax Online is continually reminded that we make the game, but you make it awesome. That's why I want to take a minute to welcome you. Those of you who have been with us from the beginning, those of you who have joined us recently, and the many new players who are looking for a new fantasy virtual world to call home. Welcome to you all. Those new to the game will quickly find that ESO's greatest strength is providing so many different ways to live your virtual life in Tamriel. Solo, group co-op, PvP, crafting, decorating your home, chatting with friends, it's all there. Holy chat. We've got a ton of new things to share with you in today's show. For starters, this year-long adventure will be a return to our storytelling roots. Instead of another Daedric invasion story, 2022 will feature a tale of political intrigue and subterfuge unfolding in a location you have never seen before in an Elder Scrolls game, ever. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my good friend, Pete Hines, who is on set Pete! and ready to go. Whoa, Pete's doing ESO stuff? Welcome everyone it's to the Uncle 2022 Pete. Elder Scrolls Online Global Reveal event. Today, you're getting an in-depth look at the next year-long adventure in the Elder Scrolls Online. And as Matt mentioned, the team at Zinemax Online Studios is excited to share exclusive new details about a part of the Elder Scrolls that's never been explored before. And stick around for a special ESO Live after the show, where we'll go over the upcoming Oh my gosh, well this is lots of ESO today. Our first DLC in this year's adventure. With me once again is the one and only <gasps> It's Rich! Rich! Hey Rich. Hey Pete. Welcome. <gasps> it's Thank you. so I'm weird really, really to see them in the room together. To back home. Congrats on 20 million players. It's a huge accomplishment. For the folks tuning in who may not know a lot about Elder Scrolls Online, it's so give weird. us a sense of what is Elder Scrolls Online. ESO is an Elder Scrolls game first and foremost. So and weird. It's a game about your personal journey through the world. You can now play Skyrim With inside Tamriel, ESO. We removed all the arbitrary <laughs> level gates to prevent you from exploring and you can just pick a direction and, and go and do whatever you want. And there's a ton of stuff you can spend your time doing. Oh, it's not just like go fight things or do quests, but it, it's really a, a breadth of content. It is, there's so much to do in Elder Scrolls Online and it ranges from 
questing to PvP, housing, crafting, the justice system. There's also loads of group-oriented content in our Dungeons and Trials. <laughs> We've also got a number of collection-based systems that players can participate in, so from treasure hunting to antiquities, <laughs> uh, collecting lore books, and it's so just funny. the list goes on and on and on. It's a massive game. It's an Elder Scrolls game, it is. but it's online. There's a ton of stuff to do just like you would expect in an Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> And much like an Elder Scrolls game, it has an amazing community around it that's built up around ESO. Talk a little bit about the, the folks that have really made this game what it is. They're really what makes the game special. Mm -hmm. It's the community that makes the world come alive. They are incredibly supportive. They just love sharing their love of Elder Scrolls with other players mm -hmm. and are hands down the best community in games. These folks are truly what make this game special. And, you know, if you want help, they're always there waiting to help you out. But it's really up to you to decide whether you want to play this game by yourself or, or spend time playing with others. Absolutely. This is an online game, so you're bound to run across other players. But it's your choice if you want to interact with them or not. <laughs> and I highly recommend that you do so, because the social bonds that you develop with those players can last a lifetime. And if you want to play online, by yourself, but not by yourself. You also have companions, which are NPCs by yourself, that you but can like bring not by yourself, you. but like by yourself. A companion but not. is your personal adventuring buddy. They're always I there need to for figure, you. Figure out my companion. I've been bad at companions. So if you need a little bit of help tanking enemies, you need some extra damage, you need some healing. They're always going to be there for you. So last yeah, why for haven't me I used my in, companion? We're all super excited to hear what's new. <laughs> I shared some exciting news last year for the so community, and I wondered if you had any I'm new so details good at to this share game. with those folks about what's coming. We do. So back in October, we announced that Spanish localization was coming to ESO in 2022. We're very excited to let everybody know that it will be available with this year's chapter in June. And we're also excited to let you all know that the Spanish forums for the oh. Elder Scrolls Online are live today. That's so, so if you, cool. If you want to come That's join huge. us on Elder Scrolls you know Online .com, we've got the Spanish forums up There's and running so many live, and we look lines of text in this game. Uh, community there. Great stuff. Could you imagine but playing this game in a completely different content? So, what do you got? Language? For us? That's so, so like much to work. Everybody to High Isle, the next chapter of the Elder Scrolls Online and the centerpiece of this year's Legacy of the Bretons adventure. Let's check out Hi. our new cinematic trailer. Hi, Isle. <gasps> Bretons? Bretons get love this time? I'm so excited. That has been one faction and race that I wouldn't, it, they have not dove into Breton lore in the game. Not really. They're like hybrid. They're like magic hybrid. Oh, yes. It's the, it's the, it's the cutie boy himself. He's back. Oh, she's back. Oh my God. The like main characters from the beginning, very, very beginning trailer is amazing. This is so cool. Okay. <gasps> That's so cool. Holy shit. This is so different than their teaser. Their cinematic team, they are so good. They're so sweet too. Oh! He's a Nightblade, watch. Oh, 
There's the Nord. He's back. The trio's back! He's dead. Oh, uh oh, bad guy. just got our first look at the Elder Scrolls Online High Isle. Rich, give us a little background on this what? year's adventure. This year's adventure is called Legacy of the Bretons, and our focus is on exploring Breton lore and culture. It's a story that's being told over four major updates this year, and as Matt said earlier, we're kind of going back to our roots in terms of storytelling. This is gonna feel <gasps> like a classic Elder Scrolls ah, game. The Bretons are this traditional medieval feudal society with knights, noble houses, and of course, all the politics that surround that. Politics, our fans love politics, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the Elder Scrolls, at least. So for those familiar with Tamriel in the second area, or maybe not, talk a little bit about the Three Banners War and where it's left Tamriel. Sure, so the Three Banners War is currently raging throughout Tamriel, and it has left the land fractured with all the factions vying for power over Cyrodiil and the Imperial City. And this year-long story is focused on a dream to end that war. It's gonna be an adventure. It's always an adventure. Now, High Isle is a spot that most fans are not gonna be familiar with. It's, it's a bit of an unknown. It is. It is a location that's never been explored before in an Elder Scrolls game. High Isle is one of the four islands in the Sisters Archipelago, which is an island chain located far to the southwest of Daggerfall and northwest of Somerset and has only ever been documented by a single map in Redguard. And it's really, really exciting for us to be able to do something completely different this year, completely new, and we can't wait to share it with everybody. Now, we're focused on the Bretons this year. Tell us a little bit more about the Bretons and their culture. What can we expect to learn in, in this year's adventure? When you go to High Isle, you are gonna see that this is the epitome of Breton culture. This is feudal medieval oh castles God. I'm and losing tournament my mind grounds. Right now. This is a resort destination for Tamriel's wealthy. And as it's far removed from the mainland, it's a bit of a safe haven and therefore a perfect location for secret peace talks between the Alliance delegates. And these peace talks are being hosted by the Society of the Steadfast, which is a new faction led by an extremely wealthy noble in High Isle named Baron Vaccaro. Oh, here and we go. of course, this is an Elder Scrolls story. <laughs> so, of course, there are groups out there who stand to profit and gain power due to the war. So any hint of peace talks could quickly result in an opposition and sabotage. Do we know who's behind preventing these peace talks? We do. So there are whispers of a secret society named the Ascendant Order who threaten to ruin the peace talks. They're led by the Ascendant Lord and I'm gonna leave the rest up to the players to figure out. Ooh, cliffhanger. Now, it's been a while since Zoss had the opportunity to create and add completely new elements to the Elder Scrolls, so this has to be exciting for you. And the it team. is amazing. It's fun to go back and re-envision content, but conceptualizing I'm so happy. the entire region I can't even breathe. I'm trying to process. Daunting. <laughs> so who better to talk about that than our art director, CJ Greb, and he's gonna walk us through it. Hi, everyone. As always, it's very exciting to be part of creating a brand new Elder Scrolls story. This time, it's the Sisters Archipelago, and it's especially exciting to get to build a little known and never before explored corner of the Elder Scrolls world. Our concept team began finding inspiration for the island's look from the beautiful windswept shores of the Mediterranean. We see stunning waterfalls, imposing cliffs, and oceanside beaches that one would find scattering the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The landscape highlights the natural beauty of the island, but their civilization as well. Our team knew how important such an addition of the world could be to the deep history and lore of the Bretons, and how important that would be to so many fans of Elder Scrolls. We leaned into the architectural and cultural traditions from medieval and feudal Europe, knowing this could be blended into our established Breton designs from the base game. The dense city streets of Gonfalon Bay and the idyllic coastal palace of Castle Navir are prime examples of the imposing Breton structures and hidden underground catacombs born from that work. 
Players will also find medieval fanfare and splendor on the tournament grounds where nobility and commoner alike enjoy festivities. The nobles treat High Isle like a resort, and that's reflected in the way the nobles dress. High Isle elite always dress in their finest, projecting their status as not only the leaders of the great family houses, but their barely hidden ambitions to command the archipelago with total power. All of this pomp and circumstance gave us the opportunity to return to the classic medieval armor and attire so distinct of the Breton style, plate armor, tabards, and heraldry. The beauty of High Isle shines like a beacon to the rest of Tamriel, but it can't all be so sandy pretty. beaches and sunflowers. The dark side of High Isle's success lies directly to the north. There, across the water, you'll find the dense, deadly jungle island of Aminos. This area serves as a prison for criminals and dissidents deemed unworthy of High Isle. Once inside, there are no guards, <laughs> no law. I'm gonna get sent there. I'm going to prison. Who's coming? There's more than two locations that players can look forward to, as the Sistress Archipelago is an island chain. Players will get to explore throughout the year. High Isle is one part of the legacy of the Bretons, what we call our year-long adventure. Rich, what else can folks expect? We're gonna start this year off in March with the Ascending Tide DLC, and that adds two new dungeons. And stories from that DLC set the tone and provide backstory for the events that kick off in the Ooh. High Isle chapter in June. And of course, this is a year-long story, so we're gonna continue it in quarter three and quarter four later this year. And it doesn't matter how much you've played ESO in order to experience the new content, right? Right. right, both new and returning players can jump in at any time. That's the beauty of ESO. You don't have to level up through years of older content. You don't have to play it in a specific order. You can just jump in and play at your own pace. Now let's hear from our community team on how you can get started with Gina! High Isle today. Hey everyone, we're here to let you know that starting right now, you can pre-purchase the Elder Scrolls Online High Isle <gasps> for all platforms. It's the girls. This new chapter will launch on June 6th for PC, Mac, and Stadia, and June 21st on consoles. And just as a reminder, ESO is available on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5, which features 4K high fidelity and 60 FPS performance modes. If you already own the game, you can get this version as a free upgrade. As for High Isle, you can pre-purchase by visiting elderscrollsonline.com or one of many online retailers. Now, when you pre-purchase the chapter, you'll immediately receive a matching set of the Pale Frost Elk Mount and the limited time Pale Frost Fawn Pet. Though keep in mind, the pet is only available if you pre-purchase now through April 4th. We have a few different ways to hop in and start your adventure in ESO. And if you're no wondering guards, no which laws. version is right for you, well, <laughs> we're here to break it down. If you're new to the game and want to dive it's like in very right new now, world. the ESO collection the fawn is so is cute. You. This collection gets you instant access to oh, everything I want this. the base game has to offer, I want the, along with all oh, what is five it? previous annual chapters. You can play in any order, however you like. So you can begin your Tamriel adventure today, and of course, you'll have full access to High Isle once it launches in June. Alternatively, if you already own the base game or any of the previous chapters, you'll want to grab the upgrade version. We also have collector's editions available that are great for new and existing players alike. These editions contain even more bonus items that will be available when High Isle launches, like a brand new mount type and an epic armor outfit style. So what about new merch? <gasps> Hi, Ms. Nintendo. How are you? If you want to get your hands on some the sweet is so High cute. Isle merch, we have brand new items available for pre-purchase on the Bethesda Gear store. Oh like my this gosh. Ascendant Lord statue. We want the fawn! T-shirt. Key art lithograph no. and more. Where's the fawn? We'll both be back right after today's show to give you a first look at the Ascending Tide DLC and update 33, show off some additional ESO merch and more. So stick around and we'll see you all soon. And now let's hear from Lore Master Lehman. He's got details on the story you'll experience in High Isle and some of the characters you'll meet along the way. Hey gang. I am so Hi. psyched to be part of the team bringing a brand <laughs> new story and new setting to the world of Elder Scrolls. Exploring the legacy Hi. of the Bretons provided us with a great opportunity to dig into the history, the culture, and the geography of Western Tamriel. While the Sisters Archipelago has gone unexplored until now, every aspect of its history and culture has roots in the lore of Tamriel. Oh my gosh. And we have had a blast taking the Bretons out to sea and building High Isle into something familiar 
but also profoundly unique. Hi, welcome to, to the begin, stream. Let's touch on who the Bretons are. They're a fascinating race with a really complex history that hasn't really been touched on in previous Elder Scrolls adventures. The Bretons are a hybrid race, the descendants of both humans and elves, which gives them a unique perspective on Nern's oldest feud, the conflict between men and Myrrh. It's a lot more than just knights in shining armor. One of the most distinctive parts of Breton culture is how it's organized. <laughs> the, the, High Isle is an openly feudal society. The shot that has a from this is so funny. It's so good. We see in it's the intense. Mid to late ages. I need Peasants to do something like that for my bottom, stream. Just like the bottom three quarter shot. Dance of palace intrigues, When's the Destiny crossover? I wish. The top. I wish they'd bring in High the Fantasy to Destiny. The Sisters Isles, ruthlessness can be a virtue. So watch your back. Give me some it's swords. It's not all sinister plotting and knives in the dark, though. Dragons. The high romance of Arthurian legend has a place here, too. Many Breton nobles are stuck navigating core conspiracies, sure. But others, the Shining Knights of old, set out on grand quests for adventure and glory. And there's plenty of glory to be found in the wilds of High Isle and Aminos. You won't do it alone, though. A few of our favorite ESO characters from High Rock and elsewhere are returning to lend a hand. Jakarn, professional thief and raconteur, and Captain Zaji, the Khajiit captain of the Perfect Pounce, will both help you untangle the plots <laughs> the of the Ascendant Order. The Perfect Pounce! The so zealots cute. of the Ascendant Order are the chief antagonists here in the Sisters. These well-armed fanatics want to bring about a new utopia without crowns or thrones, and they're willing to know. kill as many people as necessary to make that happen. You'll definitely want to keep an eye out for their leaders, too, the Ascendant Lord and his chief lieutenant, Descendant Magus. We should try These to mysterious close it. rulers may have influence that runs deep in the Sisters' Isles. High Isle is packed full of intrigue, adventure, and exciting Breton lore. I can't wait for you to visit the Sisters. You're really going to dig it. We've discussed the upcoming story and location for our High Isle, but we have a new game system coming with this chapter as well, and I've been waiting this whole time to talk about it because <gasps> it features something I love. It's what? a collectible card game. You're right, and we're calling this new system Tales of Tribute. It's a collectible card game that is played entirely within ESO. This is something I've always wanted to see come to ESO, and I'm super excited we're finally able to add it. So how will Tales of Tribute be integrated into the game? Like, am I playing it wherever I want? Is it certain situations? How does this work? You're generally gonna be able to play it anywhere. You'll find it in taverns throughout Tamriel, you can also just go up to somebody and challenge them directly, or you can find a match in the group UI. And in addition, there is a storyline that you could advance by challenging certain NPCs throughout the world, or you can play against other players as it has its own ranking system as well. So there's a single player kind of thing, and there's also a PVP with its own ranking system? Oh, this is getting better and better. <laughs> now, how, how do I earn new cards, new decks? I assume there's, there's some of both. How, how do I go about doing that? Yeah, so once you complete the tutorial, you unlock the four starter decks, and that's what gets you into playing right away. And then as you explore the world, you complete the quests, uh, you will start to unlock and find new patron decks that add to your, your cards. You will also find unique individual upgraded cards as well, so there's oh lots of exploration tacked on top of it. <gasps> so you said the CCG was different than <laughs> other ones. I want to joust on so my sparrow. which one is this like? Is this a resource building <laughs> Thank game? Thank you so much for the resale, welcome game? back. What, what am I gonna do? How are you? Doing? So this is a resource building game where you're both working towards trying to reach the victory point goal. And you can do that in a bunch of different ways. You can use the patrons themselves to create so cool. favor, to so help pretty. you advance through it. So it's all about strategy rather than combat. And essentially, we're on a race to get to a certain number of points, gather the most resources before our opponent yep. does, right? What kind of rewards do I unlock in the game? Like, I assume I'm just not unlocking cards and decks. Do I get to unlock stuff in ESO itself? Absolutely. There are tons of different rewards. Rich is uh, so in this, sneaky. From cosmetics to All these little directors are so sneaky. Including transmute stones, Popular. which is something players really, really want. Uh, so there's really something for everyone here. And I really want to enforce one big point when it comes to Tales of Tribute. And that is you're not going to be at a disadvantage if you're playing someone who's already unlocked all the cards. Uh, all the upgrade cards, uh, because at the start of the game, you pick two decks to put into play. Your opponent picks two decks. They're shuffled together, and you both play from that same common deck. 
So it's not only balanced so that I can play somebody who's been playing forever unlocked, but I also get maybe a chance to try some cards or decks that, that I haven't unlocked yet. Absolutely, yep. Super cool, so excited about this, and I'm sure we got a lot more to share on this. We do, we just scratched the surface. This is a really is big system. So from as we get closer our deck to PTS, and their we'll deck. have a lot more detail and have a big deep dive on this. So stay tuned, we're really, really excited for it. Now, pardon my terrible pun, but I hear there's something else in the cards, like maybe a new adventuring buddy or two to help on quests? You are correct. So we have two new companions coming with High Isle. Uh, the community loved the companion system we introduced in Blackwood, so the team has been hard at work adding more. And I don't want to spoil the stories too, too much, but I'll give a little bit of a tease uh, to the two new ones. So one is named Ember, and she is a Khajiit. Oh, and the other she's is cool. A Breton named Isabel. Ember grew up on the streets, so she's a little bit morally flexible, if you will. Uh, she's clever, she's a bit wild, she has a knack for magic. He, uh, no. Whereas <laughs> Isabel, on the other hand, is an aspiring knight <laughs> who leans towards the honorable ideal. She's not preachy, lecturing, or stiff, though. She just really wants to do right by players. That sounds amazing. Can't wait to have a new adventuring buddy as we explore the next chapter. Now, before you go, is there anything else? Yeah, there's tons more info to share with you all. Um, I just want to thank the community. We wouldn't be able to do this without them. And I also want to take a moment to recognize the team back home. You know, everybody at home working on ESO, they're amazingly talented and passionate at what they do and they get asked to solve impossible problems on a regular basis. It is such a treat to be able to work with this passionate group of people and get to represent them. So from both Matt and I, thank you so much everybody for all you do. You're amazing. Today we've discussed High Isle's interesting locations, characters, and lore. We touched on an upcoming card game system, two new companions, and digital rewards players can unlock when they pre-purchase the game. We also announced that ESO will be available with Spanish language support in June. Before we go, I'd like to share a few reminders. ESO High Isle is available to pre-purchase now on all platforms. New players who pre-purchase the ESO Collection High Isle will get instant access to the base game and all previous chapters, so you can start your adventures right away. And stick with us for our post show, hosted by Jess and Gina, We'll talk more about the things we've discussed here, as well as the first DLC and the legacy of the Bretons' adventure. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in Tamriel. Jeez. Never before seen. Elder Scrolls <laughs> story. <laughs> my fate, my brain hurts. I'm processing. I'm lagging. Also, let me. I don't know. Let me see if I can close this. You can see I'm rosy today. The live? I don't know what's gonna happen here though. We want to make okay, there we go. Gets their yes. crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the other uh, channel. We're only a minute in and already. <laughs> 60 frames? Um, it should so be the, the next gen update definitely did happen. Through Twitch. So you can either do that. There's gonna be like a chat pop-up that says you can now claim it, or if you go to twitch.tv slash drops, you can claim it there as well. And once you do, the crate and the pet will appear as soon as you log into the game. How do I say you want this? Me to say it? Yes, please. Go ahead. I know We're you can excited that you want crabs, but I was like <laughs> You will you will get Wow. Let's go. Um, so how about this? Just Mike for the win. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do something else for you. We'll do a giveaway. We're going to do our first giveaway of the day. <laughs> awesome. We have three $250 Bethesda Gear Store digital gift cards. Well played. Say that <laughs> so, wow. so awesome. Coral Airy. Okay, Coral Airy, so, first uh, dungeon. Like I said, we're on an internal server. I'm going to use uh, developer commands and stuff like that so that you know, we can get through this stuff. This isn't like a combat preview where you're gonna see all the abilities of, of the, the bosses or anything like that, so. It's Captain Colleen. Mm, yeah, so this is Coral Airy. Um, this is located on the northern section of Somerset. For those of you that have been to Somerset Isle, you'll notice directly yes. on the map, this northern section. There's a lot of caves and hideaways in mm -hmm. the 
uh, in, on the coastal Is this spoilers? Part of spoilers! And this just happens to be... <laughs> Spoiler alert! This is the new dungeon! <laughs> One but this is the new dungeon that's coming out in a month. So, so uh, what has happened here? A month or two. Clean, she is Spoiler! To <laughs> Don't come for me! <laughs> uh, for those of you that play the Daggerfall Covenant storyline or uh, any of those as mentioned, Medjikarn before, uh, that's who he's, he no, has no, gotten no. himself into trouble and again. been kidnapped again. again. And Colleen has been sent <laughs> here to rescue him again. again. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, your goal here. But uh, she will explain to you that, you know, there's there's some uh, Yagra attacking what appears to be this uh, Ascendant Order base. So I'm going to walk through here. You're going to see uh, Yaga set up. I'm going to fly a little bit, go a little bit faster. Look at this dev account. And again, this um, is an internal server. So ooh. Finn has some cheat codes on. So that I way should. he doesn't get killed. I mean, yeah. we know his mm -hmm. skills are okay, but. Okay. You know. <laughs> right. right. Uh, I am not. Uh, yeah, I have. I can't be attacked. I can't be aggroed by monsters and stuff like that. I'm just showing through and showing you kind of like the scenery and stuff. So this is the, the outer portion of uh, the, the coral area. You see some, some dead Yagra here, and the Yagra are attacking. So um, one thing that we've done in, in uh, later dungeon packs and stuff is we've introduced the, the concept of their secrets uh, out here and their secrets. Love it. Uh, that's been really, really well received by uh, by everybody. That's kind of pretty. I like the ocean stuff, look. Things and stuff. And we want we we're we're gonna kind of carry that forward and stuff. I know it's a bit of a spoiler. Awesome. Um, but uh, to give context for the it came from sigils. Oh, to embed those into stories, and they may Tell not play hi. into the story of that the dungeon quest is giving you, but they do play into their own story. So it might have something to do with these Yagra that are here. Contest. Hey, real quick, I do want to yeah. mention um, we are now locking the giveaway for okay. the three gift cards. Um, we have drawn potential winners. We are going to be contacting you via Twitch DM from the Bethesda channel just to confirm eligibility. So keep an eye on your DMs just in case it'll be coming from the Bethesda Twitch channel. Or I guess a whisper. It's whispers on Twitch, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whisper. So we will announce those shortly but in the meantime we can enjoy Finn's more, dungeon tour. more yeah. tour yeah. yes more, more tour so uh once you make your way kind of past these geography you get into the uh uh this is going to be the uh first boss that you that you would face in the dungeon this is uh maligalig who has uh one of the best names <laughs> what? For a that boss. Is excuse me <laughs> maligalig <laughs> yes this is one of the best bosses. she's a she's a big monstrous yagra here she has uh, some really, really cool uh, abilities and mechanics that you guys will have to discover on Monday because we're just going to move past her. So no spoilers. spoilers here. Yes. No. Nope. Colleen took a side path, got through there. Uh, so as we progress through, and now we're actually going to get into um, more of the ruin section. So this Ooh. is more of the. And, and so we wanted to <sighs> look how look these, at the fog. The enemies and stuff, but they're not. Uh, but look at those guys. This guy's got wrecked. I just can't uh, get over really how working. detailed these the dungeons Ascendant are now. Here, and you guys, nobody knows who the Ascendant Order really is. So uh, part of the mystery is finding out who they are, why they took Jakarn, uh, and stuff. So you're going to see little little things where the Yagra are attacking. Them. <laughs>